Hey everybody, I've got a crazy idea. I have a friend that I wanna make a gift for. Instead of going out to the store and buying something, I wanna see if I can take these scrap pieces of pine that I have, an old drop cloth, and my favorite, some unnecessary walnut. I wanna see if I can take all of these scraps that a lot of people would just throw away or they'll keep piled up in the garage like I've had. Let's see if I can take this trash and turn it into something that might be more like a treasure without spending any money. If you wanna see me do it, come along for the journey. For a long time, I never understood why people cut miters on the table saw, especially when you have a chop saw, they seem to be quicker. But what I've learned is cutting miters on the table saw is actually way more accurate if you have the right jig and way repeatable. And um, I built this table saw sled that is uh, from Michael Alm and David Pesciuto with Make Something. I'll link their videos up in the top of the screen. Uh, this thing is amazing. It's a lot of fun to make, and it makes cutting things like picture frames and 45 degree angles really easy. I've already off camera uh, cut up some of the pine that I have into three quarters of an inch by one inch or something. I've already cut one side on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and I've got my the shuttle already set. I'm gonna make a few cuts, and in no time, these two pieces will be four identical pieces that can make a perfect square. All right, we got four even parts that have a 45 degree angle on them. That was really easy, I love that jig. You should make one of those. We're gonna turn this into a perfect square like this. It's gonna be a canvas. I've made a lot of these in the past and I have one of these, um, four of these, a set of four, these 90 degree picture framing clamps. They're okay, but they, they can be fussy. What I found is it's actually faster and easier to use the blue tape method with some glue, a 99 cent spring clamp, and a speed square. I was skeptical about this, but after trying it, it's pretty amazing. Let me show you how to do it. Take a piece of tape, lay it down, and then we're gonna add a little bit of glue. This is just tight bond number one, so it'll dry fast. This isn't gonna be the strongest joint, but you don't need it to be. Just add a little bit more glue to that. We're gonna do that four times, and I'll show you how to square it up. All right, I've got all four corners taped, and if you know anything about this method, you're probably like, this is truly suspect because look at this. You can move this thing out of square, which is not ideal. But the great trick about that is you can use that to your favor. What I do, I take a square, and it is out of square. I put the square in right here and check it out. It is not square at all. Now I can play with it. I can manipulate it. I can get it square. But it's not going to be square on its own. So all you do... And since this thing will play and move, you now force it into square. And I do that in opposite corners. I'll now do it to this corner right here. This is actually square. Boom. As you can tell, I actually prefer doing this method opposed to doing four corner clamps. These can get, these work, but they can get real fussy. And I found that just putting two speed squares in the corner, and I've seen people just do one, but I, I've got another one, why not do it? This really gets you a solid square. Now, it's not, this isn't a picture frame, so I don't have to be super accurate, but it's close enough for a canvas that's gonna hang on the wall. All right, it's been a few hours, and I've got the clamps and the tape off, and this is square. Next step is to cut out the canvas we need. When cutting out your canvas, you wanna make sure you cut more than you need. I usually am stingy with materials, but it's super important that you have enough so you can pull. Staple in the middle. All right, this next part is the part I'm most nervous about, especially on doing it on camera. And ironically, most people won't see it, but it's getting these corners folded just perfectly. So come in a little closer. Let's see if I can get it the first time. All right, a rookie mistake that I used to make was getting 
taking my staples, I don't know if you can see this, but I've stopped my staples here. When I've done it in the past, I've stapled all the way here and I've not been able to do this corner. You don't want anything like this. That'll hook on things. I'm gonna pull that tight. Pull your corner in and then get this to where it staples like that. You want a flat seam just like that. one 800 super pro all right i got all four corners done and they look pretty good it's not the tightest but it's tight enough i want to take this to the next level and i want to make out of walnut a frame that goes around it that this canvas will float in so i need to take some measurements because the frame needs to be thicker than this and uh, I wanted to wait to make the frame until I have the canvas on because it adds a little bit of thickness with the canvas folded in the back here. So let's take some measurements and see how thick our walnut frame needs to be. I've measured this with my really expensive six inch ruler, which came really in handy for this. And the canvas with the canvas folded is about an inch and a half. Since I want this to be inset in the frame a bit and I want to have this floating look which will require a backing piece. I need my walnut scraps to be about two inches thick, which is a thicker frame than I usually have done. But I think in this case, thickness isn't a bad thing. Time to mill up some walnut. Here's what the frame is looking like. I like the proportions of it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's gonna work. Looks great. I'm gonna tape up those corners and see if I got a good fit. All right, it's time to glue this up. And blue tape is fine, but I found that this masking tape is a little cheaper and stronger, so I'm gonna go with it. Since this wood is pretty thick, set this down flat and not too far off. So we'll give it about 30 minutes to an hour to set up. I want to get my spline jig ready to go so that we can reinforce these and then do the finishing touches on it. All right, the fit you're looking for on these things is snug. Now this piece, that's way too loose. It's, you're not gonna get what you want. This is obviously too thick, it won't even go in. So I have these ones that I cut up on the bandsaw and they're perfect. There's a slight amount of friction, uh, not too much. I wish they had a little bit more friction, but when we put the glue in, you're gonna swell a little bit and that's what you want. And that is, you can see, it's pretty snug, that's perfect. We'll do that seven more times. All right, I have all eight splines in and I'm gonna let that glue dry overnight and then tomorrow I'm gonna to come back in here, flush cut all these off, do some sanding, fill in some of the hairline cracks that I've got and get this sucker ready for mounting. All right, I've got this all sanded up and I filled in all the little maybe cracks that, I, that were in the splines with some glue and sawdust. We are at the step, which is my least favorite step, which is putting some finish on. My preferred finish on walnut like this is from General Finishes. 
um, but I'm out of it and I want to get this done. So I'm going to try this wipe on poly mostly because I have it. It's easy to apply it and it dries pretty fast and I don't want to take a lot of time. So this should work. We'll see. After that, I'll put a layer of paste wax on it to soften it up a little bit. A tip I want to pass on to you that I didn't do for a long time is using these tack cloths to get the, the fine dust off this thing. I've never used these because I thought they were unnecessary. They're kind of expensive. They're about a dollar a piece or something. They're not like crazy expensive, but you would think they'd be way cheaper for what they are. But I'm telling you, using these on your projects, it just makes the finishing stage way easier and it removes all the dust. I've had, I've used an air compressor, all kinds of things. And at the end of the day, I keep these on hand because they are so easy. 